I'm Kira Wilmot. I am 19 years old. I'm a sophomore at uh, Florida Polytechnic University. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about school to prison pipeline, of course. Now, what is the school to prison pipeline? The school to prison pipeline is when school age children are being arrested and even possibly charged with felonies or processed into the justice system. As we have first, we have Celicia Johnson. She was six years old and she was escorted into her principal's office for throwing toys in her kindergarten classroom. They called police on her and she was arrested for throwing a tantrum. Dominic Green was 14 years old and he was playing a prank on a teacher that he didn't like. He logged into the school computer, which by the way, only the password was only the teacher's last name and changed the school's background. And he was arrested and charged with cyber hacking and his charges have yet to be cleared. Most recently, Ahmed Mohammed was arrested for bringing a clock to school. Homemade clock, he brought it to his teacher to show, show her, and she freaked out, called police, and thought it was a bomb. Of course, after a week, his charges were dropped, and he was offered a scholarship to MIT. He went to Twitter, he went to Google, and all these amazing offers happened. But for me, it wasn't as easy as just a week of charges getting dropped. Uh, I was assigned a science fair project, and I had no idea what to do. Um, a friend suggested doing a volcano, but my teacher said no volcanoes, no baking soda and vinegar volcanoes. So my friend said, why not use different ingredients, like toilet bowl cleaner or an aluminum foil? My idea was to either slow the reaction or completely dissipate the reaction, like all the way, so it doesn't react at all. So I was bringing in the project to show my teacher, and I didn't know how a toilet bowl cleaner aluminum foil reacted. I thought it was just like a baking soda and vinegar reaction. My friends were just as curious as I and asked me to show them, so I went ahead and showed them. The only thing that happened was the lid popped off and a bit of smoke came out of the bottle. But the dean of discipline wasn't far away. He heard the pop and asked me what was going on. And then I told him it was just a science project and he was on his way. But just before lunch, I was pulled out of class and told to write a written statement about what happened that morning. I was sat down in the resource officer's office and told I'd be arrested for two felony bomb charges. Um, they talked to my teacher. My teacher told them there was no science project to sign whatsoever. My sister had to come down and get my stuff. and I was arrested, handcuffed, drove in the back of a police car to the juvenile justice, uh, ju uh, the juvenile justice center where I was processed. They took fingerprints and mug shots. My mom came to pick me up. She didn't even get a call saying your student is in trouble. She got the call that your student has been arrested and is being has already been processed. My mom picked me up, we went home, and as soon as we got home, it was already on the news. Kira Wilmot, 16-year-old Florida student, made a bomb and brought it to school and, and detonated it on school property. <sighs> we had to get a lawyer. And for the time being, I was suspended from school for 10 days and being recommended for expulsion. I had to go to an alternative school and it, was, it felt like prison. Every morning you had to walk through a metal detector to make sure you're not carrying anything. And the curriculum there was stuff I was learning from eighth grade. But finally, after fighting, after a month, the charges were dropped after petitions and public outcry. And then there was a phone call, first to my lawyer, to my mom, to me. It was Homer Hickam. I don't know if you guys know who Homer Hickam is, but he was arrested in high school for a rocket that he made. And it wasn't even his rocket, it was from a mine. They thought it was one of his rockets. I don't know if you guys have read the book October, or read the book Rocket Boys or watched October Sky, but he's a really cool guy. And he invited me to Advanced Space Academy, which is a picture on the far right there. <laughs> Um, he found out that I had a twin sister and raised money to have her go too. I was eventually let back into my old high school and graduated from there. But I still wasn't done. My charges were still there and when I was applying for college, I had to check the box that I was arrested. I got a call from one of the admission counselors asking about the incident and I had to tell her everything and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to make it. But finally, I got in. So the takeaway of this, all these kids here, never give up on your dreams. After going to Space Academy, I realized what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be an, a mechanical engineer. And 
out there right now, like Danielle said, there are kids who are imagining, and like Nikhil said, there are kids who are learning things much faster than us adults can. And it scares adults. So what they do is what the, they're arresting kids, putting them away so they can't build the future. But we need our kids to be, build the future. We need teachers, we need lawyers, we need all these kids to build the future. And we need all of you, whatever your dream is, to continue forward with that dream and never give up. Since my arrest, I am currently going to Florida Polytechnic University. I have become a professional model, and I was invited to the White House for astronomy night and met Ahmed Mohammed, the clock kid. 